Jesus traveled all around Israel preaching the gospel, the good news that God loved them and was going to save them. He gathered his disciples and all those who would choose to follow him, from the most important Jewish leaders like Nicodemus to the poor outcast like the woman at the well. He performed many miracles like changing water to wine and feeding 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves. Everywhere he went, people were amazed at the things he did that showed them who he was and the things he said that explained why he had come. After three years of traveling, it was time for Jesus to return to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. As Jesus approached Jerusalem, he came upon the tiny village of Bethany, just outside the city gates. Do you remember who lived here in Bethany? That's right. Lazarus and his two sisters, Marth, Mary, and Martha. Lazarus was the one Jesus had raised from the dead. That was a miracle too. That night, a dinner was given by Lazarus and his sisters to honor Jesus. Martha served the food. It was a wonderful Sabbath dinner. Some of the disciples were there. Along with others from Bethany. Everyone laughed and talked and ate for hours. Then all of a sudden, Mary stood up from the table and took a jar of pure nard, a very expensive perfume. Mary took the oil and in an extravagant act of love, she poured it on Jesus' feet. The whole house was filled with the sweet smell of the perfume, and Mary knelt down before him and wiped his feet clean with her hair. That might sound like a curious thing to do, but in Bible times, people were anointed with oil to signify God's blessing and call on their lives. People like kings and priests and were anointed to show that they were set apart for God's special purposes. You could also anoint someone as a mark of respect. Sometimes a host did this to his guest. The other kind of anointing was done on people who had died. They were anointed with oil and spices before they were buried. I wonder which one of these kinds of anointing Mary was doing on Jesus. <clears throat> More than one. She anointed as a sign of her honor and devotion. She anointed as Jesus as king, priest, and prophet. 
She anointed Jesus for his burial just one week away. There would be no time for him to be anointed before the Sabbath. Today, Christians use oil to anoint people when they are baptized or confirmed or when a priest is ordained. And oil is also used to anoint someone who is sick. In anointing Jesus with oil, Mary was acknowledging Jesus as her king and expressing her great love for him, and she also was unknowingly anointing him for his death. Now, Judah Iscariot, the one who would betray Jesus to his enemies, was also there on that day. But Judas Iscariot did not like what Mary did. He objected to what Mary had done and said, Why wasn't this perfume sold? Why wasn't the money given to poor people? It was worth a year's pay. Now, he didn't say this because he cared about the poor. He said it because he was a thief. Judah was in charge of the money bag. He used, he used to keep himself. He used to help himself to what was in it. But Jesus, defending Mary's actions, said, Leave her alone. The perfume was meant for the day I am buried. You will always have poor people with you. You can help them any time you want to, but you will not always have me. What she has done is a beautiful thing to me, and it will be remembered all over the world wherever the good news is preached. Meanwhile, word got out among the Jews that Jesus was back in Bethany. The people from Jerusalem came to take a look, not only at Jesus, but also at Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. And many, many people put their faith in Jesus. But as more people put their trust in Jesus and followed him, the more the Jewish leaders got angry about Jesus and his teachings. Jesus spoke the truth about God, but they didn't want to hear the truth. They were used to doing things their own way. They didn't want to change. They wanted to go their own way, even if it was the wrong way.